Well, Peter, nice to meet you. Nate, pleasure, thank you. So Transformers, you've been with them since the beginning. How, what has it been like with Optimus Prime from the 80s, now we're in 2014? Yeah. Oh, well, I was gone for quite a few years in between, you know. I think it was from 86 to 2006, somewhere. <laughs> I was absent. But, yeah, that's interesting because you think back and uh, that's a long time ago and here we are uh, still doing it. It's really kind of exciting, just the sheer thought of it, you know. It's, how did that happen? You know? <laughs> Yeah, well, so how much has it changed from the cartoons in the 80s now doing live action movies? Has it changed a lot for you? Yeah, well, the character hasn't, certainly, but uh, technologically, I mean, from G1, our generation one back in the 80s, that was animation, you know, and, uh, and we did a lot. We did a lot of them. And then to come into the, the new uh, conception of, of um, uh, Transformers through Transformers Prime in the, uh, the, on the hub network and then of course the Paramount huge features that uh, just blow everything uh, you know, away. I mean uh, it's the technological advances, the, uh, the animation in and the ability to be able to see it, you know, at will through, uh, you know, on a Blu-ray or a DVD or a CD or even on demand on television or digitally, you know, getting it online. I mean, well, they never had that back in the 80s. What's surprising, though, Nate, is that uh, the, the basic values of Transformers have not changed, you know. It was a brilliant conception from, from the beginning. And uh, despite the fact that changes have happened and a lot of, a lot of uh, people, you know, that grew up with it don't like change, you know, they don't like change, but the characters haven't changed really. Not who they are, what they are, you know, it, you know, for whether it's a truck or a different kind of truck, but that's that's what uh, technological advances are. I mean, you know, you can't do that as, with skin. <laughs> well, you can certainly, you know, hammer a couple of fenders into a different thing. <laughs> However you want to interpret that, I don't know. But thinking back, I mean, I have a lot of respect for, for the kids that... Uh, that, that love the, the Generation One and some have a hard time trying to, you know, get back into that, but into the new, the new feeling, but to be reminded that the characters haven't changed and certainly Optimus Prime hasn't changed. You know, he's, he's bigger and he, you know, he does oh, so many more things, right. but his basic character hasn't changed. So I've got one last question for you. One of my favorite evil characters, Venger, that you voice from Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a big Dungeons and Dragons nerd. To doing heroes like Optimus Prime. Do you like doing villains and heroes? Is there one that you like better? That's a little more exciting for you? Um, well, there is such controversy over Venger and I don't want to go there. And he was definitely evil. Well, yeah, sometimes it's fun to, to to get outside and out, out of the box of uh, of that, and you know, but I prefer to do something that's a little more rewarding uh, on a human level, uh, something that has more influence in a positive way. And I would put Optimus Prime at number one for that. But did I enjoy doing the evil character? I suppose because I, I if I was going to do it, I was going to try to be as evil as. as as I could, let's think, you know, we grew up as watching evil characters on, in the movies, and I said, now I have an opportunity. I said, well, maybe I can be Boris Karloff, or maybe, you know. <laughs> uh, That's great. Yeah. Well, thanks, Peter. Hey, Nate, time. what a pleasure. Thank you very much.